This is Valley News Live at 6. This is what you do with a loss like this. You look back and you try to figure out what did I miss? What flags did I miss? And really there was nothing leading up to it. People are grieving tonight after a man known for taking care of others ended his own life. Tonight, loved ones are sharing his story in hopes of heightening suicide prevention awareness and healing those left behind. Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie has our story. For those who knew Brian Erickson, he was the farmer's pastor. He spent his life in Detroit Lakes in the last two decades preaching at the Cowboy Church in town. A very kind and giving person always giving of himself. In his free time, he worked with at-risk teens in the area and led services at Pinewood Church in Monaga. News of his death spread quickly and came as a shock. Pastor Brian ended his own life in late January. Obviously, it was masking troubles that he had. It made me really stop and think, what are other people facing that we walk by every day? Katie Palmer, Brian's only child, says her dad dedicated his life to helping others. And although he is gone, she wants his story to continue to do the same. Katie decided to make a video and share her family's story on YouTube. It's since gone viral. I really don't want his death to be for nothing. And I thought if I can even just save one life or help one family member who's also struggling with the loss, then it would be worth it. Katie adds, you never know what battles people are facing, saying our troubles are huge, but there's always a way out. In Minnesota, Courtney Lockie, Valley News Live. If you or someone you know needs help, they can call 1-800-273-8255. Sure nice to see those temps climb again today. I noticed some melting on city streets. Let's find out from Hutch whether the light snow is going to continue tonight. Hutch? Yeah, for some of us, we cannot take the chance of a few more flakes out, mainly east of the Red River. But as we take a look at peak temperatures today, it is so pleasant to report to you. We saw a lot of teens out there to near 20. Look at Grand Forks 17, the peak temperature there today. We're holding on to the teens for a few in the Northern Valley, Hallock and Grand Forks, 11 in Jamestown, nine Detroit Lakes and Fergus Falls at 10. Say we've had a fair amount of cloud cover and some light snow making things mighty slippery out there. So take it easy. But we did see some clear skies up in the trees of North Central Minnesota and the visibility because of the low clouds and fog around the area is at times a mile or less. So keep that in mind tonight as we got the frozen tundra here. Any moisture can quickly, well, condense and become a cloud on the ground. So fog and temperatures approaching zero by bedtime tonight in the FM area. We will slip below zero in Grand Forks and Fargo tonight, but this will be a thing of the past shortly. I'll have details as we close out your work week and head into the weekend here in just a moment. All right, thanks, Hutch. A surprise late this afternoon in a Clay County courtroom. The man accused of killing and dismembering 19-year-old Destiny Avery last April withdrew his guilty plea and is now asked to take the case to trial. Ethan Broad pleaded guilty last month to second-degree intentional murder of Avery. Broad admitted to stabbing Avery in the throat with a knife, hitting her over the head with a pipe, and bringing her body to his garage where he dismembered it and threw it in the trash. Avery's body was found in the Clay County landfill in late April after a two-day search. Broad was supposed to be sentenced this afternoon, but informed the judge that he had changed his mind. Destiny's family tells Valley News Live they're disappointed and angry and call Broad's latest actions the farthest thing possible from justice for Destiny. Now we invite you to join us tonight on Valley News Live at 10 in a story you'll only see here. You'll hear from Destiny's mother about this emotional day. A 69-year-old Minnesota woman has pleaded guilty to shackling her five-year-old foster child to a high chair for several hours. Court documents state Martha Ann Smith of the Red Lake Indian Reservation admitted to endangering and neglecting the foster child since the child was just three months old. In October 2019, documents say she tightly bound the child's wrists and ankles to the sides of a high chair to prevent the child from eating food in the home during the night. According to state guidelines, those convicted of felony child neglect can be punished by up to one year in prison and or a $3,000 fine. Two people are in jail following a high-speed chase with police. It happened around 12.30 this morning along 15th Street Northwest near Cragness in Clay County. A deputy tried to stop the vehicle. It took off. Deputies used stop sticks to end the chase. That happened along County Road 26, the car ending up in a ditch. The driver, Braden Muck, was arrested. His passenger, Gustavo Garcia Anaguano, 
was also arrested. A scam that's telling people they want a sweepstake is making the rounds in Clay County. The sheriff's office says a person who is claiming to be David Anderson is telling people they won 10 million bucks from the publisher's clearinghouse. But in order to claim the money, you have to send $25,000. If you don't have the money, the caller will ask how much can you send? The sheriff's office says the number they're calling from is this 513-643-2952. A new Minnesota COVID-19 vaccine connector is now available. This tool will help all Minnesotans find out when, where, and how they can get their vaccine. People who have not received the shot are encouraged to sign up on their website, regardless of their current vaccine eligibility status. When a person becomes eligible, the connector will notify them and connect them to resources to schedule an appointment. The state is currently vaccinating health care workers, long-term care residents, pre-K educators, child care workers, and those over 65. Now, the state says demand for the vaccine exceeds supply, and people should remain patient as more vaccines continue to arrive. There will be no cost and no restricted time period for signing up. To stay on top of the latest vaccine news, you can browse through our VNL vaccine tracker. Just open your phone camera and point it at the QR code on your screen and then tap the link that pops up. We also have the link on our home page. The Minnesota Senate has approved an attempt to rescind Governor Tim Walz's emergency authority to close schools amid the pandemic. It came one day after he announced a plan to speed up the return of students to school for in-person classes. The House rejected a similar proposal last week. In North Dakota, the legislature is considering a bill that would legalize marijuana for recreational use with restrictions. A House committee narrowly approved a bill allowing for adult use marijuana to be available for medicinal pot dispensaries. The bill mirrors existing regulations for medical marijuana use, except that small amounts may be purchased twice monthly by those 21 and over. North Dakota's House has approved one type of edible for medical marijuana patients. Lawmakers say edible cannabis products were included in the original legislation but were later thrown out. Supporters of the bill say it doesn't make sense to pass bills to disincentivize smoking cigarettes but not give medical marijuana patients more options. By providing it by another uh, normal less unhealthy means. Some law enforcement officers have come forward saying adding edibles to the market could make their job more difficult. More outages are being reported in the area. Later on Valley News Live at 6, we'll show you what areas are being affected and how many people it's impacting. A lot of cloud cover across the valley today and some flakes keeping things mighty slippery outdoors in the FM area. Your forecast does have warmer weather. I'll have all those details coming up. Join me. Weather is next. This is Valley News Live. 